Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is uh, doc with uh, Dr. Uh, Cubitt Poe, and the title of the uh, show this morning is Christian Living and Self-Esteem. And of course, uh, we have uh, Dr. Poe, we've had Dr. Poe with us on a number of occasions. And uh, Dr. Poe, I don't think that uh, there's any way that we can introduce you uh, to uh, this particular audience, because you've been with us many, 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 many times <laughs> over and over again, and, and each time you bring us such excellent information. But now what we'd like to do today is to uh, talk about, uh, first, you know, give some information about your background, education, that kind of information. But the uh, topic this morning, Christian living and self-esteem, we want you to sort of uh, lay that out uh, to us uh, after you give us a, a little information about uh, your background and some of the things that uh, were important in terms of bringing you to us with dealing with this specific uh, topic. Well, I've been a uh, psychiatrist now since 1970. Uh, 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 I'm also a uh, ordained minister and former pastor of two churches here in Nashville, and currently I'm the associate minister of uh, Christ Mecca Chapel located in Laverne, Tennessee. I'm also in a part-time private practice in Dixon, Tennessee, and a graduate of Meharry, graduate of Tennessee State University. And uh, I've practiced in different settings over a period of uh, 39 years, and I've become aware of just how uh, widespread the problem of uh, low self-esteem and very low mm -hmm. self-esteem is and so I've developed an interest in and in, uh, seeing the connection uh, between Christian living and, and problems with self-esteem. Very good and of course the uh, topic today is Christian living and uh, self-esteem. Let's uh, look at uh, if, uh, uh, some of the things that you consider to be important in terms of opening our audience up to this idea of Christian living uh, and self-esteem because it seems to me that you've somehow connected Christian living with uh, self-esteem that it, it, there might be a great possibility if you become involved in a certain kind of lifestyle, Christian living, and, and it might do, go on and explain some of that to us. That, that, that seems to me what it, what it leads to. Well, that's quite correct. Uh, uh, Dr. Haney, uh, the problem of not feeling good about oneself is a very widespread problem in, in most age groups, among, uh, among youth, among teenagers, among young adults, among middle-aged adults, and even many elderly adults. And uh, this problem of not feeling good about oneself is a, is a very uh, central problem and has so many different negative manifestations. Uh, for example, uh, if I don't feel good about myself, most likely I will begin to make choices designed to help me to feel good about myself and most often the choices I make will end up increasing my problem of not feeling good about myself. For example, uh, persons who have low and very low self-esteem are more prone to get involved in alcoholic uh, beverages. They're more prone to use drugs. Uh, they're more prone to engage in sexual activity before and outside of marriage. They're more prone to overeat. They're more prone to smoke. Uh, they're more prone to, to, to be hostile in their attitude and in their uh, actions towards other people. And so low self-esteem and its many manifestations are, uh, is, a major, is a major problem in our society today. Mm -hmm. It looks that way, which is to say that most of the things that you're talking about, and I think you've already characterized these as negative kinds of things that folks can become and go and explain and deal with that. Yes. Um, and I think that it's important that we, we, we recognize that, that uh, there are signs, there are symptoms of, uh, of low self-esteem. Uh, for example, uh, persons who are constantly complaining uh, often have low self-esteem. Persons who remain in an abusive relationship often have low self-esteem. Persons who abuse other people mentally and physically and, of course, sexually uh, uh, have low self-esteem. Um, there are many other signs of low self-esteem. Exact, uh, for example, depression mm -hmm. often is a sign of low self-esteem. Panic attacks often a sign of low self-esteem. In some cases, insomnia can be a low sign of low self-esteem. Craving excitement, craving pleasure is often a sign of low self-esteem. Uh, the uh, persistent use of, or the habitual use of profanity mm -hmm often is a sign of low self-esteem. So, uh, showing off, okay, bragging on <laughs> oneself. 
Oh, and so, Dr. Bowden, let, let's get ready for this first commercial break. But I think that over the last uh, 25 or 30 seconds, we can simply say, and I think you correct, you said it correctly the first time around, is that uh, many people have problems in terms of low self-esteem. But I don't think that many people recognize these problems as uh, problems of uh, low self-esteem. They just, uh, those are the things that they live with. Yes. And what you're saying is that the overwhelming majority of folks that we might know might live with uh, low self-esteem. And it is really a problem in our society. Too. And so we're going to talk about how you see it uh, from that perspective, Dr. Poe, during the second segment. And we'll be back with you following the second commercial break. The company Dr. Cupid Pope, 